Welcome. Today's pick a card is looking into the current Mercury retrograde, um, looking into all things retrograde, normally starting with the re. So it's rewinding, reevaluating, re editing, reconciliations, um, reunions, all that, those kinds of things um, that we're looking at. So it's bringing things from the past to reevaluate or looking at things again, uh, reevaluating situations before we sign contracts, before we make big decisions. So what is being brought back for you to reevaluate? Let's put it that way. Um, how are you being asked to reinvent yourself? Um, how are you being asked to re-edit or re-look at things? If that's even a, a thing. I know it's not, but I just wanted to add the re there. Anywho. Um, we have three options today. Option one, we have the star. Option two, we have the ten of cups. And option three, we have the queen of wands. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Timestamps will be in the description box. Pause the video now if you need more time to choose your pile. See you at your pile. Welcome if you chose the star. This is your reading. So... What is Mercury retrograde bringing in for reevaluation? What is it bringing back to you? What is it bringing to you basically from the past to look at again? Uh, what is the advice? Let's just see what comes up, okay? So with the star here, I'm gonna say long-term goals. I'm gonna say healing, hopes and wishes and dreams coming true and hope, renewed hope. So maybe there's a sense of renewed hope around a long-term goal or something that you've been wishing and dreaming about, wanting in your life, uh, a renewal of faith as well in the divine, in your higher self, in your connection to spirit, um, a renewal of dreams and hope and faith in your dreams, um, and healing. Um, a renewal of hope when it comes to healing as well. You could have Aquarius in your chart, but it doesn't have to be. The number 17 could be relevant to you as well as the number 8. 8 has to do with permanence and when it comes to prosperity and stability. It's also about hard work, putting in the work and getting the results. So it's almost like you're, you're getting a second look at what you need to work on more so that you can reach your goals and your dreams and your health. Okay, so maybe there's a reignition of some hopes, dreams, long-term goals that you, that were lying dormant from the past and you're picking them up again or having a, a second look at them. Okay, so we have a temptation here, so beware, Mercury Retrograde also brings situations from the past that could have been toxic, but we tend to look at them with rose-colored glasses, um, and there's a tendency to go back to those situations, or they come back like you can dream about an ex that was toxic and you could feel this temporary temptation toward this person who wasn't good for you for example or you know there are red flags there or it didn't work out the first time so there's really no guarantee that it would work out the second time even though there's maybe a renewed hope around a connection that is tempting or is now tempting you because either you're connecting in the 5D, 7D or in dreams or some way, shape or form and this person's energy is very tempting to you. Either because there's unresolved matters that were pending that were never discussed and so this energy is coming back in for a cleanse and 5D communication. 
either for closure or whatever this may be. The number 19 could be relevant to you as well as the number 1. One ones are new beginnings. Nines are endings. So it may be that you're rethinking a new beginning here or reignition of a connection and it's tempting to you. Yeah, because let me just open up the angle here a little bit. Um, I think I just need to, yeah. Okay, we have the fire card here, so you could have fire in your chart, Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries, or this person could. But again, there's a fire being relit in you. It's a reignition of a flame. Could be an old flame from the past, or reignition of that flame inside you to go after your long-term goals and dreams. It could be both. But I am seeing two dragons here, they look like dragons, one is white, one is blue. So again, possibly two people that are spiritually intertwined and meshed and connected at the soul level. These are they looking like twin flames to me, first of all, because we do have the word fire that is connected to flames, but they are coming from the same place. It's like they're the same soul, but they have like two parallel and very different like sides to that soul. It's the light and the dark. So one of you has light tendencies and one of you has more dark tendencies. And it, you're both part of the same soul is what I'm seeing here, but you're you're living different lives or something like that mm. It could be that each one of you is either you have children together or you're connected separately to two different souls because that's I'm seeing um, Who kind of mimic what you are to each other on a different scale. So so could be soulmates here but maybe your twin flame is showing up in your dreams, communicating something to you, tempting you. Or someone who's toxic. We're going to find out more about what this is. Uh, we have the poet. And the number seven could be relevant. Um, the number seven, definitely about your spiritual path. Um, a spiritual connection. But your connection to your soul is coming back for review to, to, so that you can have a really good look at it. Now, it could be that you see this connection as poetic and tempting. Poetic could also be chaotic. It could mean that it is tempting, but also seemingly impossible. But there's something about witnessing this from the eyes of a poet. It's like there's a connection here that is tempting because it's like poetry. Now, poetry could also be tragic when it comes to a connection between two people. Many times poets do mirror or do um, report um, very poetically what can be separation between two people or frustration in a way that pain mimics um, or pain is um, is beautiful or the suffering is beauty is love is pain is suffering so there's something about that here um, but there's also something about looking at the truth of things and gaining clarity um, Yeah, that's really all I'm seeing here. Maybe one of you is a poet or writes poetry or is artistic. And the other one is less. But I'm seeing dark and light here again. So yin and yang energy, masculine, feminine, negative and positive. I want to see what else with the astro guys now. Okay, we have the sixth house, the number six. 
so that's also Virgo energy. Then we have the South Node. All right, and then we have Leo. So yeah, fire signs, some of you could have Leo strongly in your charts, but I want to look at the South Node and Sixth House thing. So there's something that's holding you back, and you're going to be looking at that. And it has to something to do with your daily habits and your routines that are holding you back. And there's a stubbornness as well. Yeah, and we have Leo season. So we're already in um, Virgo season, which we have represented by the sixth house there. But something about Leo season is coming up. Or you could have your south node in Leo or your south node in the sixth house or even both. But again, something about your routines and there is a rigidity around routines that is holding you back and this is coming up for review now it could be that someone here either you or this person you're connected to is being held back by a rigid rigid way of doing things that they're unwilling to change stuck in the past way of doing things unwilling to um, change anything and so all they can do is be tempted now if this is you this is you and this is coming up for review here we have a woman so this could be you or the person you're dealing with we have September I yeah sixth house energy Virgo energy so September that's yeah something about September and a woman okay yeah I'm not gonna read into that any longer you guys have rainbow aura quartz or a healing magic universal light so whatever is coming back to be reviewed is coming back to be healed and the sixth house is all about healing as well. And September has that Virgo energy of healing. So stuff is coming back for you to heal, especially stuff that's been keeping you stuck in the past, unable to follow your life purpose. Fused with titanium, the metal of power, rainbow aura quartz is amplified with enhanced healing properties. The stone is able to heal human energy fields. So your, your energy fields are healing with the star here with the fire it's very healing energy and I, I have something to do with patterns that you were stuck in that were keeping you blocked and you're that's under like review now the stone is able to heal human energy fields by infusing the aura with rainbow fields of light Rainbow Aura Quartz is wonderful companion for astral projection and out-of-body experiences. So maybe you are having out-of-body experiences during this Mercury retrograde. Joining you in the beyond while keeping your physical self anchored. Okay, yeah, so it's like you're going to stay grounded. Not much is going to change in your physical reality, but you're going to have these extra sensorial, extra dimensional experiences that will be very healing colors have a healing quality in rainbow aura quartz and are able to match the tone of your aura's energy field to repair and release blocks beautiful so what is coming under review and healing is going back to these patterns that are keeping you stuck in the past maybe they're coming from your past possibly even your childhood and it's like repair repair one of those rewords from the Mercury retrograde. So you're repairing and releasing blocks during this Mercury retrograde. Beautiful. It's like you're going back to do this work that wasn't done before, so then you can move forward once Mercury moves forward again. Living your life in color with this crystal is a must. All signs Mars. Okay. Mars energy means taking action. Okay, beautiful. Now you guys got the world's 
Again, here we have Aquarius, Taurus, Leo energy as well as, um, what is the other Scorpio? The signs I'm seeing strongest here are Scorpio, um, Aquarius, Leo, and Virgo. 21 could be a significant number, and the number 3, the world, closing out a cycle. Something to do with your 3D reality, your material reality, is uh, you're very grounded, but it's kind of like on pause while you do all the spiritual work. Justice, so that you can find a balance. Libra energy, you could have Libra in your chart. To find a balance, give yourself justice. Make everything fair. Make everything fair. Justice. Okay. The number eight. But again, I'm seeing two major arcana already out of five cards that I'm going to... And this one's also major. So there's like major things under review for you right now. Because it has to do with how you're going to move forward, how you're going to achieve things in this world, how you're going to make your dreams come true. And so these are, this is big healing so that you can move forward in a big way. Um, there's a contract that you will have to review here, and it has something to do with something that will affect your material surroundings. So don't sign anything before Mercury retrograde is over. You have the King of Pentacles. Yeah, something about your money and your stability or your health, okay? Healing finances. Okay, so what's coming under review? Your budgets, your investment plans, your savings plans, your um, investments plans. I, I think I'm repeating myself. But again, repetition is a theme for Mercury retrograde. So there are things that maybe are coming in that you need. Maybe you find yourself repeating, looking at things repetitively or going back and forth to make sure you're covering all the bases. Either way, whatever you're healing is going to put you in a very strong financial and healthy position in your life. One where you're going to be fully equipped to follow these dreams that you have. To put you in a position where everything grows in a, in a way that is very stable. So we have the death card, Scorpio energy, but it's like Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo showing up here as well, I forgot to mention. but. It's like you're reevaluating anything that you need to needs to come to an end in your life. The number 13 and the number 4 and how you need to be methodical and disciplined about how you put things to rest in your life so that you can do yourself justice, find a balance and move forward with your hopes and dreams and your long-term goals. What needs to change basically is under review. What needs to change? Knight of Swords, and how you need to move forward. How you're making decisions about what needs to change about the way you communicate and the way you move around to achieve certain hopes and dreams and long-term goals in your life. Um, it could be that there will be a cancellation of air travel or delays in your flights or anything to do with road travel, but I'm seeing air travel you may need to postpone or change the date. It really isn't advisable to book during a Mercury retrograde or even book to travel uh, during Mercury retrograde because there could always be delays and technical issues and it's always best to plan trips, air travel, other kinds of trips around Mercury retrograde. Um, also, we have ask help from others. Um, you're also, what's coming into review is to what extent do you need to ask for help from others? Like, are you asking for help? Are you afraid to? Why are you afraid to? Um, should you be asking for more help? Are you asking for help too much? So that's coming under review. Um, also, 
you may realize that you need to ask for help when it comes to a situation here that you're struggling with, that is keeping you stuck, and it could be an attachment. And that's one thing that needs to change. And it's, a, and it's an attachment to a certain role that you play in society, actually. And you may find it difficult to do this on your own, to disengage and um, move away from this attachment, but it is something that you're definitely being called to do, is to remove the mask and be genuine and authentic, because that is the only way you will actually reach a goal that resonates with you. Otherwise, you could be reaching many goals, but they may not be the goals that you want for yourself, but rather what other people want for you or what you perceive is to be correct in the eyes of other people. We have square and challenge, but of course this is going to be challenging and frustrating to you to realize that um, this is something you can't do on your own. So there will be tension during this Mercury retrograde, and it's all around your attachment to a role or a mask that you've been wearing. Um, and so while you're motivated to work on this healing to be genuine, there's also frustrations in having to do this because this is very challenging as well. And it's going to be a struggle, but you're going to work it out. Now, the square challenge card says reconcile. So it seems like what I'm seeing here is you're reconciling with the truth of who you are at your core, your spiritual truth, your soul. You're, rec you're reconciling with your true, genuine, authentic self. And you're reorienting your entire life in a way that is letting go of this att attachment. So what needs to change is the attachment to this mask that you've been wearing that is no longer if it ever ever was, you're going to realize that it never really served you in the end. And so the only way to move forward and achieve the things you're hoping to achieve is by removing the mask because it's keeping you stuck and shackled. And it's something about your past that led you to believe you needed to wear this mask in the first place. So big changes during this Mercury retrograde for you guys. Last card we have... You and your loved ones are safe. So what this is telling me is don't worry about being yourself. Those who love you will stay with you. Everyone will be safe. Just because you choose to be yourself doesn't mean other people will be in danger. Um, there's a new beginning for you around the new moon in Cancer, which is the last week of June. Um... Should you choose this new beginning, your loved ones will be safe and you will be safe. So, whatever this is. Pile number one, it was a pleasure to read for you guys today. Let me know how this resonates for you in the comment section. If it did not, choose another pile. Take what resonates, leave what does not. Um, thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting. It really helps the channel. It helps me bring you more. Extra content is on Patreon, TikTok, YouTube members area. Information for that is in the description box. For readings, life purpose reports, and energy healings, you can find my email in the description box. For these healing bracelets, you can find a special discount code link in the description box to where you can get them. It was a pleasure to read for you guys today. Bless you all. See you sometime soon. Bye. Till next time. Welcome, Pile 2. If you chose the Ten of Cups, this is what Mercury is retrograde is bringing back to you or bringing to you or making you reevaluate, re-edit, review, whatever the re is, okay? Reconcile, reunite, you know, all the re-words. So, Ten of Cups, something about emotional fulfillment, total emotional fulfillment, something possibly about a family, possibly about kids, love, what makes you feel emotionally fulfilled? Satiety. Satiety, is that how you say the word? What, what satisfies you? What makes you complete? Okay, something about family. Maybe family enjoyment. Okay, let's see. We have 11th house, the number 11 as well. Someone here could be a life, a life path 11. South node, oh my gosh, 
this I love the synchronicities how the south node shows up because the south node is connected to our past and you know Mercury retrograde brings back things from the past and Palwin also got the, the south node I think this is Scorpio but let me just confirm I always get these no that is Virgo yeah because Scorpio is this one that's Virgo so Virgo and a Virgo energy also came out in pile number one so south node 11th house and Virgo energy so September may be significant okay so 11th house is hopes dreams friendships long-term goals big endeavors so it's interesting how pile one got the star card which is the 11th house Aquarius energy so someone here could have Aquarius in their chart or a south node in Aquarius or south node in Virgo or south node in the 11th house um, there's something about what's holding you back or something from the past something from the past related to friendships or long-term goals hopes and dreams um, coming up for review so maybe you're bringing back from the past a long-term hope hopes and dreams and goals there could be a friend coming back from the past or a group of friends that you're connected to someone here could have Virgo in their chart also something about how you were held back in the past by or how your routines hold you back or ways of doing things that needs to come under review or friends holding you back from being happy under review hmm being disciplined about how you approach the whole friendship thing oh and also there could be daily habits that you have or daily routines that are holding you back from achieving long-term goals maybe something needs to change about your routines and how you organize your day so that you can achieve because there could be things that you're doing or not doing that are holding you back from achieving long-term goals and hopes and wishes and dreams coming true and this is all coming up for review during this mercury retrograde uh, you possibly asking yourself how do I need to reorganize my time again a reword reorganization reorganization reviewing friendships reviewing goals and hopes and wishes and dreams which ones do I really want to embrace and move forward with which ones do I leave behind for another time we have inner child okay so there could be inner child stuff coming up for review as well inner child um what inner child stuff is coming up to review that may be keeping you stuck in the past stuff from your childhood coming back for review for healing because Virgo energy is the energy of healing that needs healing the number 16 could be relevant to you as well as the number seven heart chakra something that affected you when it comes to your ability to love or be vulnerable or open to love that is connected to your inner child is coming up for healing so healing around your heart chakra so that you can unfurl back to love it seems like in some way shape or form you moved away from the energy of love into the energy of fear due to something that may have happened to you when you were a child and you want to kind of restore that good feeling in your heart chakra and that emotional fulfillment that got interrupted and I'm seeing preteen like 12 12 years old this happened somewhere between three four years old and 13 14 12 12 13 so somewhere between 3 and 13 that kind of closed up your heart space I'm seeing something that happened where before this happened you used to wake up in the morning and have this really good feeling that the day was starting and I see you unfurling back to that feeling because that feeling is connected to love before the fear the fear set in we have the river 
When I see the river, I'm seeing flow, but I'm also seeing emotions flowing very rapidly. The number 34 could be relevant to you, as well as the number 7. 7 is coming up very strongly. Angel number 77 could be relevant to you. Um, angel number 77 has to do with your spiritual path, your spiritual growth, and I'm seeing ascension. And I'm seeing alone time. I'm seeing a little bit of um, introverted pulling into yourself, preferring to spend time alone during the Mercury retrograde, and I'm seeing a lot of spiritual growth happening. With the seven, I'm also seeing 7D, and with the seven, I'm also seeing partnerships under review. Partnerships under review. Here we have the number five with the heart chakra could mean something to you. That means change. So a lot is changing underneath the surface, this undercurrent. I'm seeing a river, but I'm seeing the kind of river that is invisible. It's underneath the soil. It's like one of those waterbeds that flows, like a river that flows underneath. You can't really see it at the surface. It's not a surface level. It's deep. It runs deep like your emotions. Subconscious things being mirrored back to you. It's like your subconscious is being revealed to you in some way, shape, or form about something that needs to be healed and addressed. We have sunrise. Sunrise. Creative, new creative ideas, new ventures, a fresh start. It's like the, the energy of water and fire, the energy of emotions and or deep sadness and then the happiness is what I'm seeing. So it's almost like clarity is being shed, like light is being it's like there's a focus on what runs deep and needs healing, but then there's a good feeling with this healing. The more you heal, the more you feel good. The more you feel good, the more you heal. And so I feel during this Mercury retrograde, new creative ideas will spark new ventures, a fresh start. But it's because you're doing all this healing past stuff. It will trigger then this new sunrise, this new beginning, a fresh start for you, whatever work you're doing during this Mercury retrograde. And it's going to lead to wealth. You're going to have a new idea that will lead you to wealth. And this will happen around the month of November as a consequence. All right, let's just put this one here. You guys got Wolfenite. Wolf and I, I think I'm saying that correctly. We have journey, past life, and soul contracts. Okay. So it could be that you're journeying through your past or a past life and a soul contract. That is running you subconsciously. Now it could be in your past in this lifetime or a past lifetime or both. So... This Mercury retrograde will take you through a journey through to your past and past lives. And what will be reviewed, soul contracts, especially with friends. And every partnership could be best friends, marriage, business partnerships. The journey has only just begun. Wolf and I can travel through the past, present, and future and opens up communication with the spirit world. Yeah, with that 77, I'm seeing communication being very open with the spiritual world. 7D energy. It also aids in past life recognition. So you're going to be recognizing things from your past life, helping you to see soul contracts that you've made in this lifetime, facilitating this karmic reunion. So there could be a karmic reunion here. That's with a karmic soul contract. Now, karmic doesn't always mean bad. It just means something that you signed from your past to be lived through and in this lifetime and completing a cycle once the lesson has been learned. So you're going to see the lessons in maybe a soul contract from the past. Wolfenite is a power, powerful past life healing stone. So you're healing past life issues or issues from your past in this lifetime. Resolving any issues that need to be faced and regaining magic lost in the past lives to be used here and now. That magic that's going to bring you this fresh start, the new venture, the new creative ideas, your sunrise. Beautiful. Beautiful. 
We have temperance, Sagittarius energy. So very spiritual energy about finding balance, alchemizing, transmuting negative to positive energy here. Being very patient with yourself and with the process. And you're going to have to be very patient, stir, patient during this Mercury retrograde, but it's all for a good reason. The number 14 and the number 5 could be relevant. 5 coming up twice. There are deep changes going on within you spiritually. Angel number 55. The Magician. Gemini energy. So it's like you're being patient with yourself so that you can manifest from a place of a healthy connection to your soul and what's healthy for you. So it's like patiently reviewing your skills, your talents, your strategy, what you want to manifest is under review. It's like you're having a conversation with your higher self, see how they're turned to each other, to ask your higher self what is it that we're manifesting next coming from a place of positivity. Three of Swords, because there's a review of the pain that you felt every time you were betrayed, or there were third elements coming in to mess things up for you in some way, shape, or form that created pain. And it's like, you know, you're turning your back to manifesting this kind of thing ever again. And so you're like asking your higher self, how are we going to move forward and manifest differently? And your higher self is saying, well, be patient with yourself in the process and always think positive. Transmute that negative energy into positive. Do the healing so then you can, your sun can rise for you or the sun can rise for you. Two of Cups, reconciling with yourself, with your dreams, with your mind in a way that it's healthy but also I'm seeing possibly a reconciliation coming up as someone is offering you reciprocity mutuality after maybe a tricky situation where a third party could have been involved could have been a person or could have been money or distance or responsibilities getting in the way so maybe someone who hurt you is coming back for a reconciliation or a reunion. Um, Seven of Swords. Yeah, this person coming back for reconciliation may not be ready to... This person still has a lot to deal with on their end. Even though they're wanting a reconciliation and coming in with loving feelings, mutuality, and reciprocity, it's there. The love is there. It's like, it could be that they're either wary of your antics or your behavior or something that you did, or they're coming in to repeat something that they did because they're not quite ready to... But they're coming in with a strategy. So this maybe this is not a bad thing. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. Someone's coming in, in with a strategy, but you kind of need to listen to your intuition. Just listen to your intuition. It could, could be that it's a strategy to bring you emotional fulfillment. But there's something, there's an element that they're not telling you everything. Even though they do have immense appreciation for you, they will tell you that much. And the number 15 could be relevant, but the number 6 means reconciliation again, because they do appreciate you. It could be that this person is going through a lot of healing of inner child stuff stuck in the past. Um, moon feelings, yeah, something secretive about their own shadow that they're not ready to reveal at this point in time could be relevant here but there are deep feelings here and they do want to nurture you now also what's coming in review for you is how you show yourself appreciation how you take care of yourself how you deal with your emotions 
something about family or the past may be coming up about lineage or children or mothers or motherhood. Maybe you're going to find a newfound appreciation for your mother or your mother's going to show appreciation to you. Mind you, if there was an, uh, a childhood issue with your mother, it's like even though your mother loves you, they may be coming in with the same kind of um, behavior that is possibly hurtful because they don't know any better or they're just too righteous or convinced that they're right or just lazy to do the work. Um, time for healing. So I'm seeing during this Mercury retrograde, you will be healing a lot around possibly some motherhood wounds or how you've not been taking care of yourself, how you've not been nurturing yourself enough. And so I see healing around digestion problems that you may have, gut and digestive problems I'm seeing, and emotions as well. Seeing you learning how to self-soothe, mother yourself where a mother failed maybe, balancing of moods and understanding what has been triggering these moods, they've been subconscious triggers running you. That, that's been holding you back in the past and it's been affecting how you feel about yourself and other people and everything in your life. It's been affecting your relationships, even your relationships with children. But that's coming for a review for healing now. So this is good news. Your intuition as well. Reconnecting to your intuition. Learning about what is intuition and what is ego. So I'm seeing the number 15 here connected to the devil, connected to fear and ego. So it's distinguishing ego from intuition. is something that is coming in for review and learning the difference between the two so that you can move forward with your intuition and leave your ego behind. Because the quicker you do that, the quicker you will feel good and your your life will move forward away from pain, painful situations and repeating these painful situations and allowing the repetition of these painful situations in your life. And what you did to sabotage situations is also coming into review and um, maybe changing the way your mind is programmed around how you're subconsciously sabotaging connections by pushing them away because of a closed heart chakra that is now opening. So you are unfurling, unfurling back to love here. Pile 2, that was your reading. Beautiful reading. I hope this resonated for you. I hope this brought you the, the clarity that you seek. Let me know how this resonates for you in the comment section. Thank you guys for all your likes. Thank you for sharing, subscribing, commenting. It really helps the channel. It helps me bring you more. Extra content is on Patreon, TikTok, YouTube members area. Information for that is in the description box. For the healing bracelets, you can find a discount code with special link in the description box. And uh, for readings, life purpose, life reports, and healings, you can find my email in the description box. Bless you all. See you sometime soon. Bye. Till next time. Welcome, Pile 3. If you chose this Queen of Wands, this is your reading. This is what Mercury is bringing to you or bringing back or having you review or re-edit or reinvent. It's the re-words, okay? So you could have Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries in your chart. doesn't have to be, of course. But there's something about reigniting your spark, something about being very attractive, something about a glow-up, something about creativity, your sacral chakra being reignited and feeling the creative juices flowing. I'm seeing orange juice for some reason now. I'm seeing oranges as well. Um, someone here may have a black cat. Uh, but it's like something about a spark in your hand. So maybe you're realizing that you have some kind of healing. Palm chakras are very healing, very possibly like discovering that you have the power to heal with your hands. Maybe you're looking into Reiki healing. Reiki did start in Japan. So Japan could be um, something that you're connected to. I'm seeing candles. I'm seeing orange candles. I'm seeing the color orange. So sacral chakra ignited here and healing of the sacral chakra. Reviewing something around your creative endeavors. Reviewing something around what sparks you, what motivates you, what makes you feel alive and vital and ready to go. All right. Beautiful.
Let's look into this, what this may be for you. Uh, let's look into the Astro Dice. And we have first house, the self, but also in numerology, leadership, beginnings, taking leadership. We have Mercury, so Gemini, Virgo, and Mercury, communication, and we have Capricorn. All right, Capricorn. So you could have Capricorn rising, or you could have Capricorn somewhat strongly in your chart. You could have Capricorn, Mercury and Capricorn, Mercury in the first house, or all of the above. Or you could just have strong like Capricorn, Aries, or Gemini, or Virgo in your chart, as well as possibly Leo, Sagittarius. But it doesn't have to be, of course. Um, taking communication very seriously. There could be a heaviness around communication and the way you express yourself. And if you're a leader, if you're like, let's say, a boss or a leader in some, in some way, shape, or form where you have to communicate with people, just be mindful of communicating in a way that is heavy. All right. Um, yeah, and communication may just come across as very heavy for you. So don't take that personally. It is Mercury retrograde, and there is a tendency for things to go A-wire when it comes to communications because, look, there's an inter we're made of electricity and chemicals. And this whole magnetic pull between, you know, celestial bodies, let's just put it that way, and electricity is a thing. And so when things change a little bit, when change, things change in the sky a little bit, there is an interference with our electricity and the water. And that's why the moon uh, phases really affect us as well. And so this is a real thing. And so the way we think is compromised. It's foggy. It's confusing. So imagine if the way we think and receive information and the way we process information is so confusing. And we could see it with, with more of a heaviness as well. Or the way it, it may come across and we perceive it as being heavy and we process it in a heavy way. And so what comes out is also heavy. And first house energy is Aries energy, also quite bellic, you know, quite like, could be quite aggressive as well. So just be mindful of heaviness and aggression when it comes to forms of communication. Like sometimes it's better to just stay silent than to say anything that's going to make things worse or hurt someone or um, just make it a battlefield. There's no need for that, okay? So just discover your life purpose. All right, what, what, what sparks you okay there we go so we're having we're getting some leads here so it's like you're becoming aware of what lights that spark within you and that is directly connected to your life purpose of course i do life purpose reports based on your tropical natal astrological chart if you want information on that you just have to email me you can find it in the description box so maybe you are going to be discovering your life purpose through um Maybe you find it accidentally, um, and you're going to be reading about it, and you may go back and forth on it, and maybe you find some information that resonates, other information that doesn't. Or maybe you, you find out your life purpose, and it doesn't immediately sit with you well, but then if you read it like after the Mercury retrograde, then it will make sense. It could be connected to music some way, shape, or form, or your emotions. It doesn't have to be. It could be about being visible, being on screen or on stage, but again, doesn't have to be. Um, the number 29 could be relevant to you as well as the number two. Two is about second house is money, okay, and your self-worth, but also twos are about pairs, union, two people, relationships. Could be connected. So your life purpose could be like you have possibly your north node in the second house, or in Taurus, or in the seventh house, or Libra, or in the fifth house I'm seeing, or tenth house, or third house, or first house. Okay, there's lots of possibilities, or Capricorn, Virgo, or Gemini, or also possibly Aries. But, you know, there's a myriad of, I found at least 144 just basic combinations of what your life purpose could be. Um, and that is my formula, but, you know, I could dig deeper and find more than 144 combinations if you start adding things to that basic um, 
first um, evaluation. But anyway, let's keep going. We have healing. So there's healing around... Okay, I'm seeing healing of the sacral chakra, to be quite honest. So at some point in time, your ability to create has been affected either because you could have been, and I hope this was not the case, abused in some way, shape, or form. Um, I'm not going to go into that because... I can't here. The number 30 could be relevant. The number three, there's a lot of healing around wounds around that directly affected your creativity that are connected to your sensuality and your sexuality. That's what I'm going to say. So, and in maybe discovering your life purpose, it's going to help you heal these wounds as well because it's going to reignite a spark in you. And again, that heaviness, that with Mercury and Capricorn, the heaviness could be in the first house, could be in your own mind. It could be your thought process that becomes heavy because Mercury is also about the mind and the thought processes. We have the animal. Yeah, um, w something happened to you that set you into fear mode. And fear mode is fight or flight mode as well. It's almost like you're always on edge or always thinking that you have to defend yourself, always thinking that you have to be ready to attack in case you need to defend yourself. And it's connected to your animal instinct and to the animal part of your brain, that reptilian um, side of you that gets triggered and it's time to attack. That's the first house energy of Aries of attacking. Um, something because you were unhealed and there's a healing around this wound that kept you in fight or flight mode. Now, this fight-or-flight mode could have activated your adrenal glands to produce more cortisol, meaning there could be an issue around visceral fat, like around your organs, around the, the belly area, which coincidentally is the sacral chakra area as well. And so there's a healing. So it could be that because you're healing this fight-or-flight, you're healing uh, your adrenal uh, glands will stop working overtime, stop releasing cortisol, and you will start seeing... a it, there, if there was swelling around your abdominal area, there there will be a de-swelling. Like, uh, or you're going to find that formula. You're going to see how that was linked. And this is all connected to the fact that you discover something that sparks your interest. And so it takes your focus off the negativity of the past, and it helps heal by taking the focus off and putting the focus onto something that's positive. And so it's like in your brain all these like really positive um, synapses or um, things happen where your brain gets redirected uh, to um, a much more positive place. We have the fox so you could feel a connection to foxes. We have shrewdness and resourcefulness especially in business. Okay beautiful. Yeah we do have that Capricorn energy with Mercury. So it's like your focus is going to be redirected. So again, that reword, redirected to being more resourceful and shrewd when it comes to business. And so that's going to help you, obviously, ascend on the business side. We have January could be relevant here. Okay, and you know, this guy has a big nose. So yeah, it's like I'm seeing white lies and you're learning to play the game. Um, and not tell everything or just say a white lie here and there so you can um, deter, like distract people from what you're doing so you don't have to say what you're doing. It's more or less to protect. It's like a secret, your secret business or your secrets in business because you need secrets in business, right? Let's face it. We have Kyanite. So something about speaking the truth, you could be connected to oof, Archangel Michael, because this is also the sword of Archangel Michael cutting through, cutting away negativity, uh, putting you on track with where you're meant to go, and um, showing you the truth as well. It's the truth sword, sword of truth. Truth, communication, and clarity. The color blue is going to protect you a lot, by the way. Truth, communication, and clarity coming through. You're going to see the truth clearly. Uh, clear communication is going to come through, but it could kind of cut like a knife. It could be rather sharp. And it may seem quite, because it's assertive, it may seem quite aggressive once you receive it, and it can create this heaviness in you. 
Don't take it. So speak your truth. You're going to be speaking your truth or redirecting yourself and healing in a way where you're going to speak your truth. You're not going to be afraid anymore. So you're moving this fight or flight fear response and you're you're substituting it with courage because now you have something that you really, really, really want that is very healing to your soul, that really ignites that passion, warms you up, gets you out of this icy situation, warms you up. See how he's covered in ice? And the ice melts. And you're no longer uh, freezing your thoughts. You're After the Mercury retrograde, you're going to be freer with your communication. So there's healing around the throat chakra. Speak your truth. Kainai cuts through confusion, fears, and negativity. There you go. The fears, the negativity, the confusion. You're cutting through that. Um, and connecting you to your most authentic self. Yeah, that... Everything that was covering your authentic self will be melting away. Soothing the soul. Yeah, this is soul soothing. Kainat sharpens your leadership skills. There you go. First house. Energy. Leadership skills will be sharpened. Your leadership skills. And, you know, Capricorn's also a leader. So under review are leadership skills here that you will be sharpening. Shrewdness, resource, resourcefulness. And enhancing communication skills, absolutely. So your under review are your communication skills, your uh, leadership skills to be reviewed. So then you, when you move forward after the Mercury retrograde, you will be communicating and leading in a way that is more daring, more it's bolder, it is courageous, and is no longer holding yourself back. Giving you the boost you need when addressing groups, okay. Um, Kainite opens pathways and acts as a bridge from person to person or even between dimensions, delivering telepathic messages. So maybe there's a bridge being opened between dimensions and you're receiving telepathic messages here from other people. Kainite is especially great for opening your throat chakra, yes, and bringing clarity and focus when you need it. Okay, so maybe you were born, you're part of the 15% that were born in the Mercury retrograde, just as I am where you actually see clearly during a Mercury retrograde, where most people are very confused, that could be the case for you. Um, but if that's not the case, it's after the Mercury retrograde. Bringing clarity, okay. You could have Aries, Taurus, or Libra in your chart, more specifically Jupiter or Neptune in Aries, Taurus, or Libra. But again, doesn't have to be. Um, yeah, all right. So what else do we have? King of Wands, Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. We have a pair here. Guys, these are different decks, and we have a pair. We have King and Queen of Wands, all right? So this tells me that, first of all, I want to place this guy underneath his queen. Um, no pun intended, um, especially not when it comes to who has the power, because I don't believe one overpowers the other. But um, when I see flames, I see fire, and wands are fire. I'm seeing a divine counterparts in when it comes to fire, so fire twins, twin flames. All right, so divine counterparts connected, healing each other and discovering their life purpose together or they may have parallel life purposes or they're working on the same thing. Um, we have a six of cups, so there could be a reconciliation uh, with your twin flame during the Mercury retrograde, okay? Having fun, spending time together, sweet memories, nostalgia, um, reminiscing, okay? Or a reconciliation. Five of Pentacles, after a time of being left out in the cold from each other, possibly. But again, finance is under review. Why, where is the money being leaked? Why, why... Uh, you know, all these things, why am I losing money? Why don't, why haven't I reached that point financially yet? That's all coming under review and you're taking it very seriously because there's an end to the financial difficulties and there's also an end to being left out in the cold by someone who is um, your match, okay, energetically. Um, all of a sudden, unexpectedly, this reconciliation may happen and it's to end the... Um, being away from each other or putting each other in the doghouse or whatever this thing is. But 
there is also an end to financial difficulties or something being shown to you of how you can overcome financial difficulties for when the retrograde is over you can act upon it and move things to the wheel of fortune to a fortune okay capricorn is that energy of making money all right um we have the thinking man so someone will be thinking of you or if you're the man you will be thinking about something that you value very much and it could be something from the past. And again, it could be a soulmate energy here. Um, I'm seeing Gemini, Libra, Aquarius here. The number 46 could be relevant. The number 10 and the number 1. A man is definitely thinking and overthinking something that they value. That is of value to them. Um, this person could have Scorpio in their chart. This could be you. Um... Thinking about whoever is the masculine in this equation, and I'm seeing it, these two people connected, whether it's you or your person, this person is thinking about transforming, reinventing themselves, uh, intimacy with you, they're very passionate about you, and they're really regarding you as, they could be obsessively thinking about you, okay? I'm seeing obsessive thinking with this one. And you really trigger, we have the animal here and the animal here. You really trigger this person's animalistic instincts toward you. Like they have this visceral connection to you. It's not just spiritual, it's physical, it's emotional, and it's very strong, very deep, very strong. Um, uh, I also see you going through a deep transformation, and... Um, and it, come, it has something to do with your mental processes. We have confidence is the key, is your key to success. And yeah, the Queen of Wands is confident. It's Leo energy. It's sacral chakra, but it's also solar plexus chakra. It's finding your strengths. It's focusing on your strengths. It's uh, regaining a sense of self-confidence that I'm seeing here. New Moon and Leo could be relevant. The last week of July could be relevant. Um... Putting your pride aside, but being confident, working on your confidence levels going up um, in the midst of tricky situations. And also it's telling you that your confidence is the key to overcoming whatever this feeling of lack is and how you've been self-sabotaging and changing that energy from fear to confidence is what's going to get you into a better situation overall in your life. So Pile 3, that was your reading. It was a pleasure to read for you guys today. Let me know how that resonates for you in the comment section. If it did not resonate, choose another pile. Um, thank you for all your likes. Thank you for subscribing, sharing, commenting on my videos. It really helps the channel. It really helps me bring you more. Extra content is on Patreon, TikTok, YouTube members area. Information for that is in the description box. For the healing bracelets, you can find a special discount code in the description box and a link to the store. And if you want readings, life purpose reports, energy healing sessions, you can find my email in the description box. Bless you all. See you sometime soon. Bye. Till next time.